Christian Nephi Anderson was perhaps the best known of prolific LDS authors from the home literature period of LDS fiction. Born in Christiana, Norway, to parents who were early converts to the LDS Church. Of his father, Nephi said, he was not very rich in worldly goods in those days, and he could leave his family very little save his blessing. Among the clearest of my childhood recollections is that of my father's deep, rich voice when he became eloquent in preaching. Nephi also carried with him faint remembrances of wonderful Norwegian fairy tales told to the children by his father. When Nephi was just six years old, the Anderson family decided to emigrate to Utah. They sold their home to finance the trip. Joining with around 300 Scandinavian and British saints, they then set sail on the steamer Nevada and arrived in New York on November 11, 1871. They crossed the continent to Utah on the newly completed Transcontinental Railroad, eventually settling in Colville, Utah. After eight years, the Andersons moved to Ogden, Utah. Here, Nephi became a school teacher. On December 22, 1886, he married Asneth Tillotson in the Logan Temple, to whom came six children, only three of which would survive childhood. Newly married Nephi and Asenath moved to Brigham City. In 1891, Nephi was called to serve a mission to his native Norway, leaving his family with Asenath's parents in Ogden. For two years, he had a wonderful mission experience, learning much about people and places in the world. Returning, he continued teaching in Brigham City. He became superintendent of schools for Box Elder County. In 1898, added upon his first novel, was published. In 1903, Asneth became ill. Growing weaker and weaker, she passed away on January 26, 1904. Darling, for thy unmurmuring task imposed, for thy unswerving faith and steadfastness, for thy unceasing love for me and mine, I bless thee and thank our Father kind for such as thee. Ah, yes, that love that deepens more with age and mellows to a sweeter thing as years roll on, that love, Asneth, dear, has taken us both captive in his arms and bears us on to nobler things and joy as the river flows forever in its course and bears its waters onward to the sea. But two months after his wife's death, once again Nephi was called to serve, this time to Great Britain. His mission president was Heber J. Grant. Here he became assistant editor of the LDS periodical The Millennial Star. On the occasion of his late wife Asnath's 37th birthday, this poem, written from Great Britain, and along with her picture was sent to his children. Dear Lord, to her who lives with thee, my birthday gift confer, that she today may think of me as I now think of her. In June 1908, Nephi married Maud Rebecca Simmons. They had six more children. Once again, he was called to another mission in 1909 to Independence, Missouri. There he edited the Liahona, the Elder's Journal. His family was able to accompany him there. In 1910, Nephi was called as the editor and librarian for the Genealogical Society of Utah. Here he would serve until his death. He relieved Joseph Fielding Smith, who at that time was called as an apostle. Nephi was a prolific author. Numerous short stories, poems, and articles were published over his lifetime. In 1889, he wrote, a young folk's history of the church, 
This was revised several times during his lifetime. He was the author of some 10 novels, beginning with, in 1898, Added Upon, and ending with Dorian in 1921. From 1910 till 1923, Anderson served on the general board of the Mutual Improvement Association. He also served on the general priesthood committee of the church, preparing several courses of study for priesthood quorums. In late 1922, Nephi developed appendicitis. He died after an operation for the malady when he developed peritonitis. Speakers at his funeral included President Heber J. Grant, LDS Church president at the time, with whom Anderson had always remained very close, George Albert Smith, Joseph Fielding Smith, both of whom would become presidents of the church, Apostle John A. Witzel, Anthony W. Ivins, and Roger Clausen, and several other prominent LDS speakers of the period. At the funeral, added upon was particularly praised. One of the speakers suggested that Nephi Anderson had lived out the story of added upon in his life. And may we suggest Nephi Anderson and his family are now experiencing the added upon vision of which he so beautifully wrote.